All right, I'm going to give you the basics of Proxy Pose right up front so you can start playing with it and then, you know, stick around in the video if you want to get deeper into settings and philosophizing ZBrush style. So immediately we have an object in here. It is just one sub tool, nothing fancy, all one object. And if I go into geometry, Dynamesh, you're going to see it's a Dynamesh object, which means if we turn on the polyframe here, it's just it's a fairly dense mesh. Your poly count will be up here. Mine's over here on the left. It's about 800 thousand uh, points here and with Dynamesh I can go through here and I can stress this geometry out and then control drag to read Dynamesh and then that'll be my Dynamesh mesh. However, underneath geometry proxy pose we have a new proxy pose options and the reason why immediately this is cool there's some other functionality in there and there's going to be stuff you're going to find that is going to be even cooler to use this on but one reason why this is cool is let's say i wanted to pose this uh, rancor without having a ziri mesh and project my details back uh, right now if i wanted to pose it i could hit w and then if you control drag down the arm you can uh, you can mask down the arm to the elbow but see how slow it is and if i drop it or stop moving, uh, hit Q, and then try, try to control tap to blur my mask. Your mask settings are underneath tool mask. You can go through here, you can blur mask. So control alt tap is sharpen, control tap is blur. And it's it's taking a long time to blur. There is a trick you can do if you hold down control and then grab mask lasso and you zoom way out. You can actually get a nice feathered result uh, with your masking here and control tap to invert that. So. Here we go, we, we have a feathered mask here. However, it's not really ideal if you wanted to like, okay, I wanna inflate this arm a little bit. Well, since we don't have subdivision history and I went in here to like say my inflate brush and inflated this, inflated this arm, it's gonna inflate the detail along with it. I just wanna make the arm fatter. I don't wanna make the details fatter, right? So without having to resort to Ziri meshing and projecting detail, we have a geometry proxy pose and it's so easy to use and you can just use it on the fly even on a, just a plain old dynamesh mesh so how it works is there's two ways to enter proxy pose the default settings are polish zero reduction amount 0.5 and keep details at zero and if you just hit this button you enter proxy pose and now we are in proxy pose mode we don't have access to the high res right now because this has created a relationship between these low res points and our high res mesh it's not projecting it's basically telling ZBrush, wherever you move these points, the details in my high-res mesh will follow. And you don't have to use this with a Dynamesh, you can use it with uh, subdivision history and stuff like that, uh, which we'll get to in a bit. But at its base, what we can do now is, for example, if I hit W and then control drag down the arm, see how much faster and more reactive it is. So when I let go, it blurs even better, so I can go through here really quickly. And we'll talk more about posing in a bit, so I can move these arms around and you can see I have uh, I had poly groups in my original high res, so I can hit W or W to go into Gizmo mode. Control tap to select the arm poly group. Control tap again just to kind of blur my mesh out. I can move these arms out, move them up. Again, we have mask lasso, so I can go through here and I can you know grab this risk. Control tap to blur it a bit. Uh, and in fact, if we just want to grab the hand, just Control Alt and that'll unmask everything but the hand. Again, Control tap to blur that mask. W and I'll hold down Alt to set my gizmo position and we can like rotate the wrist down. So as I'm moving these high res points, and like we talked about earlier, if I wanted to inflate this arm, I can go through here and inflate the volume of the arm independent of the detail. And again, it's that relationship between these low res points and that high res mesh that when I now click this button to go out of proxy pose, all of these low res points are gonna point back to where uh, the high res points, the relationship it had between the high res points. And it's essentially like moving around your sub D1 with your sub D5 details following. Only we don't have a sub D1 or a sub D5. We have a proxy pose and a Dynamesh with no subdivisions at all. Um, again, in later videos, I'll explain that a little more fully with examples, but essentially that's what this is. So very quickly, if you want to jump back into proxy pose, you can hit that button. Uh, another way to jump back in, like we talked about, is to drag the slider around. Now, before, while I'm doing that, I'm gonna turn on polyframe here. You can just hit uh, shift F to go into that mode, and we'll go ahead and switch this to uh, skin shader for us so we can see a little bit better. So uh, up here in my active points, you're gonna see this, and also up here in the upper left, keep an eye on here. So when I click and drag to the left, you're gonna see my points are dropping and in the upper left, you're gonna see the percentage uh, amount. So if I drag it all the way to the left, you're gonna see I'm gonna maintain a lot of my detail and it's right now, the simplified face count is 94.6. And as I drag it to the right, it's gonna simplify more and more. And you're, if you look at the geometry, it's nice and uniform. All the polygons are about the same size. 
And as I continue to drag to the right, that percentage is going to decrease. So now I'm at 0.2%, 0.1%, all the way to, geez, 0%. <laughs> so very low res mesh. So you can go through and you can dial this in. And in fact, this is actually a very interactive, responsive decimation. So we'll show you how you can keep this geometry if you want it. But, you know, if you like, you, know, you just dial it in, you know, it's like, okay, I like a good, you know, 0.39 is enough geometry to see what my object is and to go in and pose it. So when you let go of that slider, you're going to be in proxy pose mode. If you ever want to hop out of proxy pose mode, I mentioned this before, you can click the button or a faster way, just hit control Z. It'll jump right back out. Uh, one thing I do want to mention in here is if I have a mask already made. So if I go ahead and mask the hand and you see we have a polygroup for the arm. If I mask the hand and hit control W, that'll make a polygroup. And then I also want to make sure you see this. If you want to, you know, mask while you're in your high res uh, geometry mode and then hop into proxy pose. Um, again, it's going to save the last settings that you have dialed in here. It's going to go ahead and use those and you're going to see my mask came through and all of my poly groups came through. So you can use that to your advantage if you'd like. If you want a mask before you come in here, you certainly can. So we can go ahead and, uh, and in fact, if you have, uh, you know, we can unmask in here and then we can hop out of proxy pose. That'll go back to our high res mesh. And you know what, let's talk about a few of these settings over here. So while we're messing around with proxy pose, the amount, you see we have a keep details and a polish. They're pretty self-explanatory. They would do about what you would expect them to do. If I turn this polish all the way up and then change this reduction amount, you're gonna see it's really smoothing out my object. Now, as I go to the left and add more polygons, it'll maintain your details a little better. Um, it's not gonna smooth it out, but you'll see as we smooth it down, it gets really, really um, polished basically. So, you know, pretty self-explanatory. And again, you can hit control Z to undo that. Um, so we'll go ahead and set that back down to zero. The keep details. Uh, so right now, if I drag this to the right, you're gonna see there all the geometry is pretty uniform. And for moving around a base envelope, that's probably pretty ideal. However, if we undo that, uh, we crank this crank details all the way up to the right and then do our reduction amount. You're gonna see it's gonna cluster geometry around major edge changes. So like you can see in the face and in the fingers and in the fold of the arm, it's collecting a lot of geometry in there. But then on these broad spaces where there wasn't a lot of detail, uh, it's kind of just giving you larger polygons. If that's useful to you to keep details, go for it. Generally speaking, and, and again, I haven't used this a ton, the details I don't really need, just uniform is better. I don't really need to polish that much, but they're there if you need it, basically. Freeze border, if we, uh, let's hit the comma key, go into your tool, sorry, hit the comma key to go into light box, uh, go into the tool se uh, section here, and there's double click the demo head. And then if we go out of here, number one, you'll see the demo head uh, actually has subdivision. So here's subdivision level one, two, and three, but proxy pose also works with it. And in fact, if we choose freeze border, well, let me do it without freeze border first. So the reduction amount as I'm reducing, if you see the border along the bottom there, that's an open hole. Uh, let's hit control Z. Let's go down here to display properties and turn off double. Then you'll see, oh, we'll keep it on, but you'll see uh, the interior faces aren't being rendered, but if we turn on double, you can see both sides, but this is basically just a single sided mesh with a big hole in the bottom. With that, if we go down here uh, with freeze border off, as we're doing this reduction amount, as we're reducing that edge or that open hole is gonna get kind of wobbly and crunchy. So if you don't like that, let's hit control Z, let's choose freeze border. And now as we're reducing, it will keep your open borders right where those points need to be. So let's hop back to our DynaMesh example here. And actually let's hop back here because you know we are using proxy pose on here so if i wanted to go through here and you know start moving stuff around or you know you can always brush if you want to go in here to like your clay tubes your clay build up or your standard brush or whatever and sculpt on here but you remember you're just moving that low res envelope around and then when i exit proxy pose we still have subdivisions it's literally just creating kind of an its own sub d level one kind of with proxy pose and applying it to your sub d3 details so you can use it in conjunction with uh, subdivisions just want to make sure i shout that out so back here in our dynamesh example Again, we got our reduction amount about 0.5. I'm just gonna hop into proxy pose really quickly and we can go through here and start playing with some of this. Uh, one thing I do wanna mention, for example, if we go in here to mask lasso and I mask this arm and then control tap to blur, uh, control tap to invert and then hit W. Just a really quick thing on posing. In fact, that was terrible, sorry. Control, hold down control. We got mask lasso selected. I'm gonna hold down control alt just to make that a little bit easier. Boom, we've unmasked uh, the arms on both sides because we have X symmetry turned on. So if you tap X on our keyboard, that turns symmetry on and in our transform activate symmetry, you'll see X is toggling on this button and we are active in the X axis across the left and right side of our model. So if I hold down alt and then tap with my gizmo, 
I can hold down Alt and, well, tapping just kind of sets the gizmo uh, on that face normal that I select. And then I can hold down Alt and just kind of move this gizmo around. Now, when I let go of Alt, I can then go through and rotate this. You see we have a very sharp transition. So just hold down Control and tap. That'll give me a blur or you can go down here to masking and hit blur. And then now when I drag this out, you're going to see it's a much nicer uh, transition. So again, we can kind of rotate our arms like that. Now, you're going to see up here, uh, we're in Gizmo 3D in the Y. So Y is the hotkey to turn Gizmo, which is this uh, thing right here, which is the default. If you tap Y, that's going to go into transpose line mode. Um, and this is the older version of how to move things in ZBrush, but there's some cool functionality. So again, if I wanted to just, um, you know, drag from one side, you know, from the shoulder down to the elbow here, it's kind of like bones. So you can actually... Uh, grab the outer, there's an inside and an outer ring. You, you grab that outside ring, you can reposition this. So basically we have a shoulder bone and an elbow bone. And then if we go in here, we have to hit W, E, and R. So move, scale, and rotate. Uh, if we want to move, you can hit W. And then with the transpose line, you can move objects. And it depends if you move the middle one, it'll move a certain way. If you move the bottom one, it'll kind of do a non-uniform scale. The first one, it'll do something weird. E for scale, same thing. You can scale with this one. You can scale with the middle one. You can scale with the first one. This is kind of like an anchor point and an end point. And then R, which we really want to talk about, is rotate. So like if our anchor point is our, el our shoulder and then our uh, end point here is our elbow, we can go through here and we can rotate. So we can actually use this to pose as well. And one reason I bring this up is, for example, if I want to hit W um, and then hit, sorry, Y to go back into gizmo mode and then say I want to move this elbow so I can go through here and I can say let's hold down control control drag to unmask everything and then I'm going to control drag over this elbow control tap to invert that and then uh, maybe control tap to blur this and then hit W and kind of just position this gizmo here and then I want to rotate this in that's the result I'm going to get and of course if I want to I can hit Y and then go from elbow to wrist and then hit R to rotate, and we can rotate this in. However, with transpose, another thing you can do, let's hold down Control to unmask, and then Control alt I'm gonna go from the shoulder to the hand, and then I'm gonna hit W, and then drag from the shoulder to the elbow. And now if I hold down Alt, while I'm in, let's hit R to go into rotate mode. If I hold down Alt here, you're gonna see it's going to go into a rotate that actually maintains your volumes a little bit. So while you're rotating, it'll actually kind of give you a pointy elbow. So that's kind of a cool thing, right? You just have to remember that if you want to rotate the elbow, go from the shoulder to the elbow, not the elbow to the wrist with the mask right here. But that's the only thing you need to remember. So gizmo functionality, transpose functionality. Let's go ahead and hit Y to go back to gizmo mode. And let's talk about one more thing. If I hold down control mask lasso, I'm going to make one of his arm or both of his arms really small. So uh, again, hold down control alt so we can unmask the arms and then control tap to uh, blur that mask a little bit. We'll hit W alt position this here and we're just going to scale this in. Now, if we scale them now, it's going to go from our world axis, which isn't what we really want. We want to do it on our local axis. So again, one of the updates in the previous version of 2023. Let's turn on LSIM and let's turn off that dynamic. So that will scale on its local axis here. So we can actually scale this down, give him some little T-Rex arms here. And then for his legs, let's hold down control and we'll mask out his legs, control tap to kind of blur that mask a little bit and then control tap to invert. And we'll go ahead and scale these legs up here. So now I've done some major proportional changes while we're in proxy pose mode. If I turn that off and then we look at the results, uh, one thing you're gonna notice if I go out of polyframe mode and let's go back into our startup material or matcap gray is what we're using. You're going to see when we made the geometry a lot bigger, the details cover a larger surface area. So when we made that surface area bigger, the details, they seem to get a little bit softer. Uh, however, when we scaled down this arm and then it took the relationship from our low res proxy mesh and then brought our high res details back the high res details followed back along with it you'll notice that the it, the contrast of the details actually got quite a bit uh, more intense so you can see our details pop on the smaller arms and then they kind of get a little less poppy on the smaller legs so that's just something to keep in mind so we're talking about relationships and you know making big uh, proportional changes to your object. However, you can use that to your advantage. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my undo slider and just undo back to where we just had our plain Jane uh, rank right here. I'm going to keep his arms out just because I like that look a little bit better. So we'll, we'll go back here. 
And if you do a lot of miniature sculpting, one interesting thing you can do, I suppose, is you can go into proxy pose. Let's go ahead and just drag this down to just to kind of grab some detail here. I'm going to say, uh, let's turn off X symmetry by tapping X on our keyboard. We're going to go to unmash mesh center, this little teardrop shape. So it, my gizmo is right in the middle. We can even hit reset to reset it to the world axis. So we have our object here. I'm going to scale it all down uniformly just a little bit, hop out of proxy pose. And you're going to see our high res details got a little more contrasty. So instead of, if I undo this, let's talk about this for a second. Uh, if we go in here to BC, there's a brush contrast uh, delta and a contrast target. So we can do tr contrast target. And what we can do is we can go through here and we can just add a little bit of contrast, contrast kind of brushed into our object. And you can also go in here to deformation contrast. So you can crank this up to the right and you'll see we can make our object uh, more or less contrasty. You can also go in here again to our proxy pose. I'm going to do this. I'm going to say uh, shift S to store a screenshot on our document here. And then I'm going to say go into proxy pose mode, scale this down quite a bit, get out of proxy pose. And then we'll just use our camera to zoom this up. And you'll see the difference between the two of these. This one has a lot more uh, contrast. So you can kind of use proxy pose as a way to introduce uh, contrast. So if you're, again, you're printing 3D printing minis, this is gonna be a, an interesting thing. Uh, as well as if you wanted to get rid of detail, you can go through here and you can scale it up and then go out of uh, proxy pose mode. That'll soften your detail here. And then you can see the difference between uh, those two. Again, don't know how useful that'll be. There's alternatives uh, to get what you need, but just wanted to bring that up just in case. I'm gonna hit Control N to clear my canvas and uh, we're in proxy pose mode. So again, we have our low res envelope here and you're gonna see we have some options in here. So uh, the first one is poly groups. Let's hit Control Z just to go out of proxy pose. And I'm gonna take this reduction amount. I'm gonna crank it all the way uh, to the right just to give us some very, very large uh, polygons here. So when I'm in proxy pose, I can say, hey, turn on po proxy groups. And if I go out of proxy pose, you're gonna see it's going to ev every, let's turn off uh, line under your polyframe here so you can see a little bit better. Um, <laughs> it's a cool look. You're gonna see every single polygon that was in your proxy model will now be transferred as a poly group to your high res model. Uh, just in case you needed to see uh, those relationships, you can. Uh, of course, in the day did show this. There's some cool things you can do in here. If you wanted to like unweld this, add some thickness and then polish and then, you know, turn this guy into a bunch, you know, basically look like you sculpted out of pebbles or something. You can use these poly groups to your advantage. So if that's useful to you, great. If not, we can just control Z out of that. Uh, another thing you can do, let's control Z one more time, is while we're doing this reduction amount, you're gonna see, hey, this is a great way to decimate quickly your object. However, when I let go, there's no way to really keep this. So for example, if I go in here and I say, well, okay, what if I clone this off? You hit clone. However, if I hit go into this clone, you're gonna see proxy pose is still turned on. So what if I want this geometry? Uh, let's go ahead here to subtool and we'll say uh, delete this out of here and we'll go back to our mesh here. So if I want to keep it, what I can do is I can go into proxy pose. I'm going to turn off proxy groups. We're going to say keep current. And what that's going to do is take us out of proxy pose and keep our geometry here. So what I can do now is I can hit clone and then I, uh, and that'll just put a copy out here. And then on this one that has all the undo history, just hit control Z to go out of proxy pose mode. So now I have this decimated mesh. Uh, available to me. I'm not in proxy pose mode. It's just geometry sitting there. So if you like this geometry, that's a way you can keep it. Uh, another really cool thing is this uh, overwrite pose option. So how this works is first we're going to dial in our reduction amount. And again, this is setting up a low res object that has a relationship with our high res object. However, now that we're in proxy pose, we can see we have an overwrite pose that's available to us. What we need to do is with this vert order, and again, it's very important that these verts don't change. We'll talk about that a little bit more in just a second. Uh, if I go through here and I duplicate this off, say one, two, three times, again, these all have the exact same vert order and we've just duplicated it off. On this first duplicate, I'm gonna go through here and say mask lasso his arm, I'll hold down control alt, and then W, alt tap here. And we're in solo mode, by the way, so we're only seeing this one here. If I control tap the blur, I'm gonna shrink this arm down on this one. Uh, on this one, we'll hold down control alt, and I'll just shrink down his foot. And then on this very last one, I'll go through here and I'll say control alt, and then we'll go to his middle of his head here and we'll just say um, shrink his uh, head down. So control tap, control tap here to blur that out. And then uh, again, we'll just kind of, 
There we go. Shrink his head down. Looks very nice. So we have uh, one object here. We have another object here with a small arm, an object here with a small foot, and then one with a small head. If I go back to my original here, you're going to see, again, we have an overwrite pose available to us. We're in proxy pose mode. I can go through here and I can say, I want, if you click here, you're going to have an option for multiple to choose from. I'm going to choose this first one, and that's going to overwrite that one. It's going to overwrite this one if I grab the second one, and then overwrite uh, with that third one. So it's just a way for you to kind of go between different poses, again, with that exact same vert order, um, and then to swap them out on the fly. So again, we've overwritten with the small head. If we're cool with that, uh, again, we're back on our original. We can go through, we can go out of proxy pose mode, and then he'll have the shrunk head version. Now let's talk about vert order because it is very important. So I'm gonna go through here. I'm just gonna delete these out of here. We don't need them anymore. So vertex order, just like if you have, uh, so we were playing with a demo head earlier. If we go down to the demo head subdivision level one, and we're like, oh, this is all cool, but what if I wanted to go through here and maybe test laid out some horns, you know? So like uh, go in here to BSH for our Snake Cook brush, turn on Sculptures Pro and try to use it. It's gonna tell you, hey, you can't use Sculptures Pro because tessellation will actually change the vert order. And there's a relationship between this low res vert and as we subdivide, these higher res verts, they have a relationship, they can share UVs, they're just, there's a subdivision history here that is that relationship. So this is why when you're in the low res version of your object here, uh, you can't go through here with like, oh, insert single edge loop with your Z modeler brush, it's gonna not let you if you wanna go through here and like, you know, try to slice through this geometry, it's not gonna let you because we can't change this vertex order. If we add or subtract verts, we're gonna lose that relationship between this low res one and this high res one. Now I will say there's some ways around this and we're gonna to get to those in, uh, I'll do a refresher, zero mesh refresher video after this. You can like free subdivision levels and you can reproject, but we're not worrying about that right now. Just knowing that you can't change that relationship. So it's exact same thing if we go back to our proxy pose guide here. If we go uh, in again, just grab this reduction amount. It's like, okay, I wanna start posing this. And then you're in proxy pose mode and you're like, hey, you know what? I want to uh, slice through here. It's not gonna let you. If I wanna go through here with my Z modeler brush and say, you know, I wanna split one of these uh, edges here, it's not gonna let you. You can't change any of your vert order because it has a relationship with your now hidden Dynamesh. As these low res points move, higher res points are going to follow along. It's not gonna project back. It's not projecting anything. It's just moving low res uh, proxy geometry, and then your high res details will follow. Now, the reason why this is so cool and so freeing, because you don't have to worry about, you know, zero meshing and projecting details, if we hop out of proxy pose mode here, I can still go back in here. Again, I'll go ahead and keep my uh, polyframe on. I would go back in here and again, hit like we did earlier. We can go through here and we can say, hey, move this. See how much we're stressing this geometry? No problem. Control drag. Oops, looks like I turned off Dynamesh here. Uh, go back in here to Dynamesh. Go ahead and, oh, Another thing too is if you want to make sure you're at the right resolution, just drag from your resolution slider onto your mesh. That'll pick the resolution, then you can turn Dynamesh on. You can re-Dynamesh. You can go through here with, uh, again, BSH or Snake Cook Brush, turn on Sculptures Pro. You can go through here and use this to kind of go through and tessellate on the fly, a very cool option here. And again, if you want to, you can control drag to re-Dynamesh if you want. And if you want, and then if you want to go through, it's very, you know, again, this is a very freeing workflow, but then if you're like, ah, oh, but if I want to pose it, I got a zero mesh. Not anymore. Just go in here to proxy pose. All of this will now be given new proxy geometry that'll follow along. Of course, we can't use Sculptures Pro on here. It's going to say, hey, can't change the vert order, so you got to turn this off. We can't tessellate this geometry. No problem. Just turn it off. Go through here. Pose your arm out, whatever you want to do. Make any changes you want, or go through here again. Again, if you want to, like, inflate your arm here, make them have a real muscular one arm, uh, hop out of proxy pose, all of those verts and all the details just gonna follow right along with it. So of course, one thing one thing you can do, uh, let's go ahead and take this reduction amount down uh, quite a bit. With lower res geometry, if you remember, let's go ahead and append a, uh, I guess a sphere. So I'm gonna go out of solo mode so we can see the sphere. I'm gonna scale the sphere down just a little bit. I'm gonna take my proxy pose geometry. I'm just gonna kinda lean him over to the side here. If I go over here to dynamics and say dynamics, uh, run simulation, let's go ahead and turn on collision volume so it sees this as a volume here. So I have my low res proxy mesh. I'm going to turn down gravity a bit, run our simulation, and it's gonna take our proxy pose and it's gonna simulate, let's go ahead and turn that off, 
or a guy as if is as if he's made of like I don't know a, towels or something. He's just made of cloth, right? Well, now if I hop out of proxy pose here, all of that high res detail that you know half a million points now of geometry just follows along. So now he's all smashed uh, on the ground here. And in fact, that might actually be even cooler. Let's go ahead and undo back to where he was just standing. We'll go ahead and get rid of the sphere. If you want to know more about this on my YouTube channel, we got the ZBrush 2021, what's new. If you go in here to this playlist, you'll see all the 2021 stuff. And in here is all the dynamic. Uh, if you want to know the basics of the ZBrush that we've been talking about, here's an intro to ZBrush you can go to. There's 50 or so videos in here. You can get the basics. So if you need to get caught up, definitely check that out. Uh, but anyway, like we were talking about here, gravity's on, uh, floor is on, run simulation is on. Oops, let's turn off collision volume. And now you'll see well, he'll just start crumpling on the ground. And then if we pause the simulation and then hop out of proxy pose, there we go. We've got him all folded up. Uh, and again, so anything that's easier to do with lower res geometry, in fact, BCK is the cloth hook brush. You can go through here and you can use a cloth hook to kind of turn this uh, into cloth. You can go in here to thick skin, you can turn on thick skin, it'll store this object. So you can actually go through here and you can kind of do large wrinkles on your proxy geometry to kind of wrinkle it up a little bit if you want to, like over a thick skin. You can in fact go in here to say morph target, you can store a morph target, you can make changes to this. So if, oops, let's go ahead and just grab our standard brush. Let's turn off thick skin. So while we're going through here and we're like using our standard brush or smoothing our geometry out or whatever changes we want to make to our geometry with brushes, because we have a morph target stored, we can go to BMG, which is our morph brush, and then we can morph back what we've done, or we could even switch what we've done since we stored our morph target, and then we can morph in what we've worked on. And then after doing all of that, we can hop out of proxy pose, and all of those changes will be uh, propagated to our high res mesh here. I do want to mention one thing. If we go in here and we turn on this little paintbrush icon, you see he doesn't really have a poly paint. Let's go ahead and fix that real quick. Let's switch back over to Skin Shader 4 for our shader. We'll choose like maybe a dark red uh, and then go in here to Color, Fill Object. And then we'll go in here to an orange color and we'll just kind of paint. Oops, let's turn on RGB for our brush. So we'll go ahead and just paint some poly paint on here. So we do have a poly paint. And then if I go in here and we just hop back into our proxy pose mode, you're going to see it's going to follow along no problem. And then if we hop out of proxy pose, of course, we still maintain our poly paint. So poly paints go back and forth. Oh, one thing I should mention is if we hop back into proxy pose and you do make any sort of change, you know, if you make a you know brush out here, you can go through here and adjust last, you know, whatever your last brush stroke is. So again, as long as you're not changing the vertex order, proxy pose uh, should be uh, work just fine with whatever you want to use. And then it does include if we go in here to proxy pose and it's like, hey, I'm, you know, I just want to have a poly group for you go in here to select lasso, you know, this arm right here, hit control W to make a poly group, W control tap that poly group to unmask just that part of the poly group here, control tap to blur that out a little bit and then go through here. And again, we can just bend that arm. Um, however, if we hop out of proxy pose mode, the poly group and masking doesn't follow along that direction. Uh, but you can certainly make your own uh, poly groups in that proxy pose. And uh, if you, you know what, let's go ahead and say load tool. I'm going to go in here to another object or a, a Z tool that has multiple pieces. You can apply proxy pose to multiple uh, sub tools. However, if we go in here, so here's our body, we can go in here to proxy pose and, you know, again, just dial in our amount, let's say, you know, 0.43 or something, and then hops into proxy pose. Um, if I go in here to apply last action, which was introduced uh, just recently in 2023, and say, okay, uh, it's not going to apply proxy pose to everything. However, if you hit the down arrow key on your keyboard here, um, you'll see we can just uh, hit the proxy pose button. So I'm just gonna hit the down key and then just tap the proxy pose on. So now all of our objects have been reduced. And in fact, if we do a merge visible, Turn off colorize. Actually, now that I do that, um, I suppose a merge visible is another way to get a clone of your object uh, where you can keep your proxy uh, polygon. So put that in your back pocket. You're going to see we're now instead of working with multiple millions of polygons, we have a very relatively low res asset that's only 118,000. So if you wanted to, and we'll talk more about posing in the next videos, if you wanted to, you can go in here to uh, Z plugin. 
transpose master, you can send all of these uh, proxy pose objects over here to transpose master. That's going to merge all of these objects together. So if we wanted to go through here and like, you know, bend his leg, control tap, you know, we, we didn't go into any low res geometry. It literally just sent all the proxy pose meshes over. So we can move all of this low res geo. We can hop back to T pose the sub T. It's gonna move all of our proxy pose geometry. Cool. And then again, if we wanna hop out of proxy pose, we just gotta go through here and turn it off. So now we're out of proxy pose and we have uh, all these objects. You know, having said that, one of the cool things about having subdivision history is the ability to, you know, you, like for example, this one, we can hop down to a subdivision level one, make any major changes to this envelope. And then as we go back up to subdivision level four, for example, the high res detail will follow. However, if this was all Dynamesh, that'd be a lot harder. But I just wanted to make sure you knew that if we do have subdivision level for all of your subtools, you can go into uh, transpose mesh. It will knock it down to the lowest subdivision uh, object or version of your mesh. So if you do have your object set up like this, uh, you can use that to your advantage. However, if you don't, proxy pose is definitely the way to go. And there's some advantages to proxy pose that, you know, subdivision history, you can use it in conjunction with it. So you're not really losing any, anything with proxy pose. It's just kind of gaining another tool in your tool belt. So here we'll see, we'll hit transpose a sub T and that'll move everything into place like so. So in this instance, we didn't really need to use proxy pose, but we could have if we wanted to. It's kind of, uh, again, just another option for you.